Now we're going to get down to the nitty gritty of what Indians are all about. I still say we Indian people are believers in the truth. This is the way of life that was given to your people. You born an Indian, you're going to die an Indian. Indianness is a good life. You're facing an Indian this afternoon. Good afternoon out there everyone. Welcome to Muskogee Vision, still your number one source for Native American television news. And I'm your host Jason Salzman bringing you the show this week. We've got a lot of great things to get to, a lot of exciting things happening uh, here and around Muskogee Creek Nation and Indian Country as well. A lot of things happening in Oklahoma, a lot of topical events that we're going to share with you today. Um, some things regarding our education crisis we have going on here in Oklahoma and uh, ways to fix that and what people are doing to take action against that. So lots of things to get to. Please don't go anywhere. We're going to take a quick break here as we always do, but get you something to eat, come back and be ready for Muskogee Vision. And welcome back to Muskogee Vision as we get started with our first story today and it involves the ongoing educational crisis here in Oklahoma. We're calling it an educational crisis because that's the only really way to describe uh, what's happening and where we rank in the nation uh, with our education funding. Lots of things happening here recently. We've seen a lot of things in the news and it involves a potential teacher work stoppage coming up here just after spring break. So with that in mind, we wanted to visit a local community that still hadn't uh, came out with a resolution from a board talking about a work stoppage that has uh, many of our Creek students there in the public schools. And I'm talking about Morris Public Schools just uh, down the road from the capital city of Altmulgee here. Uh, Morris Public Schools had a school board meeting. They invited all parents, community to come talk about a possible work stoppage. They voted on a resolution to support the work stoppage. And this is the footage from that meeting we wanted to share with you guys exclusively here on Muskogee Vision. I'm tired of talking to principals and saying, hey, I know we've lost this teacher. I want you to see if you can figure out a way of not hiring somebody back. Okay? Because when I do that, I'm just hurting our kids. I'm tired of talking to our band director. He comes to me, does a marvelous job, and tells me that he's got equipment that's broken. And he needs it fixed, and I have to look at him and say, we can't do it. And you've got to make some decisions. Maybe, maybe that means we need to have less kids in band. I don't say that, but that's the reality, because we don't have the equipment to go around. So we've got to take a stand. We want, and I'm speaking on behalf of our teachers who I've met with twice in the last couple of weeks, we want to stand arm, arm in arm with the others in Oklahoma, that it's, it's time. They desperately want to give our kids all they deserve and, and more, and we just want you, the more school community, to stand with us. Tonight our school board is going to be considering a work stoppage along with other boards across the state. Many already have. Many are meeting tonight. Many are meeting in the week, uh, weeks to come. And you know what? It, there is a lot to consider. It is a very difficult decision. Uh, it's, a diff it's a difficult decision for all of us. And what we need, though, we need you. We need you to be with us. That's important. We don't want to go at this alone. If we do this, and we do it as a school community, and I'm including that's our parents, that's our community leaders, that's our kids, that's our teachers, our support staff, that's everybody and more. So if we do this together... I, I, I truly believe that we will come out, no matter what the outcome is in Oklahoma City, we'll come out better in Morris, Oklahoma. We'll come out forever changed, and that's going to be our success. As I, as I get ready to start answering some of your questions, I want to address just one that was asked several times. Uh, many of you in the survey asked, what can I do? What can I do personally 
to help you guys in this endeavor. And, and here it is. Don't just tell us. Don't just tell us that you're with us. But we need you to be with us. I don't even know what the population of Morris is. But can you imagine if every person in Morris committed to calling up there every single day, sending an email every single day, sent truckloads every single day to the, to the Capitol. We, this small community in Oklahoma, we actually could make a difference. But... If we, as an Oklahoma school community, if, if we want to and if we band together, I promise we can make a huge difference. And we need to let them know that if they don't take care of this now, then we're going to take care of it later. And we're going to start replacing every one of them up there with people who are going to do what is right. <laughs> I really wasn't going to talk. I just put my name on it just in case I needed to. <laughs> but, uh, one thing, as, as everybody was talking a while ago, I was, I was thinking, and uh, this school is dear to me. And, uh, you know, we, we, uh, we want a lot of things. And, you know, one thing that, that I've always, uh, since I've been a principal, uh, I've always wanted our kids safe. No matter if it's in the classroom, uh, out on the sporting fields, or wherever they went. You know, I always wanted our kids to feel like they could go anywhere they wanted to and not have to worry about it. And, guys, it's hard to provide that right now with our budget. We can't provide that to the max like we should. You know, we, we have a lot of ideas. I mean, we, we would love to, to do a lot of things, but there, there's no way. And I think if we could get to our legislators to, to uh, you know, give us some of those funds that, that we could do those type of things, uh, you, you can make sure that your kids are going to be even safer. You know, uh, and I, I'm not going to go through all the things that we could do, but there's there's a lot that we've talked about, uh, and uh, and it would make your kids safe every minute of the day. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Mark Coots. Um, my wife is a fourth grade teacher here. I, I am a graduate of this school. And as Mr. Uden said, I'm passionate about this school too. My wife graduated from here. I graduated from here. My daughter is a senior here, which tears me up just thinking about that. But... Um, I would like to stand here before you and say that my daughter, who's already been accepted to OSU, go Pokes, is prepared for college, but I can't. And it's not of any fault of anybody that's in this room. It's because of the funding that has been put upon this school. It... Um, as Dr. Karch was talking about with, with the AP classes, you know, not being able to provide those, uh, not having chemistry, not having physiology and anatomy, not having those science courses. I would like to say that she's prepared, but I don't feel like she is. And that scares me. But also, <clears throat> I'm gonna use an analogy that a high school senior at Broken Arrow used last night at their at their board member at their board meeting. It's kind of like two bulls that are fighting in a pasture. And I know many of you have seen bulls fighting in a pasture. They'll fight and they'll fight and they'll fight. And the only thing that gets accomplished is the ground gets tore up. The grass gets trampled down. 
the ground is tore up, the bulls quit fighting, want to win this time, want to win the next time. Well, our school is the ground. And the bulls are up in Oklahoma City. And it's time for us to support our, our teachers, to support our staff, most importantly to support our students. We become the, we become the bull whip and we crack it yeah. and we get their attention. Okay, guys, I don't even know if I need this thing, and, and I wasn't planning on speaking tonight because I know some of you are, are tired of hearing my voice the last two weeks, and um, this is something I'm really passionate about, and Mr. Rubin's already got me tearing up, so um, first off, I, I'm, a, I'm a transplant to Morris. 18 years ago, my family and I moved to this side of the state, and we researched every school in this county deeply because my son was going into pre-K. We, we moved the summer before he started pre-K. His education was very important to us, along with his sister, who was two at the time. And we, we chose Morris because they were the best, and, and we still all are the best. So while I didn't grow up here, I, I'm so invested in this community because I raised two Morris Eagles, two proud Morris Eagle graduates, and we chose this. We chose this place as our home. So. Uh, just in saying that, the next thing real quick, and I'm, talk, I'm going to talk as fast as I can, I owe my fellow teachers such an apology. And when I say teachers, I, I, you're, you're going to understand that means every employee of the school. When I say teachers, I mean our cafeteria workers, I mean our paras, I mean our custodians. I mean if you've got a job at this school, you are a teacher because you teach some child something every single day. So when I say teachers... I mean, every one of you, every one of you. I, I thought I was somewhat of an expert on Morris Public Schools because I love this place. I love this place. In the last two weeks, I have learned so much I didn't know about the sacrifices and the things that we've lost and the, and the things that our teachers have done to help my children get through school and, and to help every other child get through school. So I owe my fellow teachers from pre-K all the way up, every person an apology for that, because while we say our parents didn't know those effects, I worked alongside you and didn't know some of those cuts because you hid them so well because we wanted our children to be as successful as they could. I, I've got a book. Two weeks ago, tomorrow, I saw this storm coming in Oklahoma and I, I spent the whole weekend researching and getting every bit of information I could. I talked to legislators. I talked to teachers across the state. I talked to West Virginia teachers. I talked to anybody that would listen to me and, and communicate back with me to find out what was going on. I'll visit with any of you about that. I don't want to waste my probably two minutes left, a minute left, whatever I have left on that. I, I've, got, I've got all that down, the, the, just the horrifying facts of what they are doing to public education. It is in danger. It is not going to exist. This is not them cutting to save money. This is not the state cutting education to save money. This is them being through with public education. We do not matter anymore. And they're going to continue to cut until we cannot open the doors. It's coming. And in gathering the information, I'm finishing up, I promise. And school board members, you can not pay attention to me for a minute because I've already, gave, I've already told you all this. But, and I see some little ones in the crowd, and I want you guys to know what I'm about to say. You're at Morris, and I, I don't want you to ever be scared to come to school, but I'm going to talk about a couple of things that we see on the news happening all the time outside of us. But I don't want anyone, you know, any of our, our little eagles here to leave here and be upset about what I'm about to say. But in gathering information from all the vital stakeholders in this, I went to my students, finally. They had questions. They had questions I couldn't answer. So this is what I told them, and I want to share this with you tonight because it's not about my paycheck. Don't let the news media lie to you. Do not fall for that. That's all they want to say when they get on there. You turn on the news and it's teachers asking for more money. No, we're not. We're not. So I want to share with you what I shared with my students. Hopefully that they would know this about me, and we've been in a couple of these situations before with the cheerleaders where we face danger. But I asked them, I said, guys, if there was a tornado coming through right now and we had to go over the safe room, who would be the last one in that door? 
I see some of my students in the in the um, chairs out in front of me tonight. I see some of your faces. And they looked at me and they said, you would, Miss Hill. And I said, that's right. Would I run out this door? Would I run out this back door right here and run over the safe room and leave y'all to fend for yourselves? No. You're right. I made that resolution a long time ago. My, my place is to be the last one in after the kids are safe. All right, guys, what if there's an active shooter coming down that hall right now? We practice all these drills all the time. There's, there's a shooter coming down that hall. Am I going to run out that door for safety? I could. There's a door right there that goes to the outside. Am I going to run out to safety and leave you guys? Honestly, tell me what you think. And they all said, no, Miss Hill, I don't think you would. And I said, you're right. Because a long time ago, I made that resolution. Whatever happens, I could not live with myself if I did not put myself between you and that danger. So I need you guys to really think about who your teachers are. Who did you all hire? Who do you all trust with your children every day? You trust them with me, with all of the teachers of Morris Public Schools, to be the last one in the building, to be the one that gets between them and a bullet. And we would do it. I can promise you every one of us would do it. So why do you think I would walk out of that classroom and leave them sitting there alone if it was not for them? If they were not in danger, if their education was not in danger. So I know I'm out of time, so I just want to say this. The next time you hear that on the news, the next time someone says, those teachers just want to raise, those teachers are leaving their students because they want more money, please, for just a second, I'm not telling you how to judge that or what opinion to form, but for just a second, just think, with those same people that you trust to get between your child and danger, who are they? And I can promise you, there's one reason, and one reason alone, that any teacher across this state would leave their classroom and not have school, because we love school, it's what we do. There's one reason, and it's those students. All right, and if you want to stay up to date on all the developments that are happening with the Oklahoma education crisis, please stay with us on muskogeemedia.com. We're going to have coverage on that at length, not just Morris Public Schools. We wanted to be able to show you a meeting to see what's going on at different places, but that's just one example. We're going to have all kinds of coverage on that, so stay with us on muskogeemedia.com. Well, moving right along, our next story takes us just over to the Muskogee Dome here in Old Mulgee, as recently a group from Dickinson College and Cumberland County Historical Society that's in Pennsylvania, home to the famous Carlisle Indian School. If you don't know where Carlisle Indian School was or know anything about it, uh, Jim Thorpe, he went there and that made it sort of famous, but uh, for a lot of people, a uh, not very famous place, a place of sorrow. And these individuals have a research grant, have made a database to research individuals that went to Carlisle and brought it to Muskogee Nation. Carlisle Indian School began in 1879 and in its 39 year history over 8,000 children were taken there. It really is a traumatic history that has had an impact um, on generations that have followed. So I think it's really important for um, both non-natives as well as natives to understand this chapter in American history and the attempt to really assimilate Indian children, which we see also as a form of genocide. You're taking children far from their homes, from their cultures and their religious ceremonies, their traditions, um, often not allowed to speak their language, and really attempt to turn them into white boys and girls. Well, thanks to a National Archives grant, uh, we have been able to visit 
today at the Muskogee Creek um, community with actually the Five Nations. And we're here to share resources about the Carlisle Indian School. We've digitized a lot of the student files that the National Archives had so that we could make the files and the documents freely accessible um, to communities because it's often very difficult to get all the way to Washington, D.C. or to make their way to Carlisle, Pennsylvania. So we wanted to be able to make the resources available both to communities, to descendants of those who were sent to Carlisle. I came to this event today to share my ancestor. I've been doing a lot of research on my great uncle. It'd be great, great uncle Enos Wilson. And he was a big influential part of the Muskogee Creek Nation. It started off as he was an orphan and then he went to the boarding school, Carlisle Christie, and then he went straight into the army. And so that was such a big deal for me that he endured all that, and we're still here today. It, as, when I was doing my research though, it bothered me because in one of the letters they wrote back, the only two words he could speak in English is to and the. And so now I want to work, I've been trying to learn the Muskogee language for like the past four years. And I've really been trying, but it's really hard. But that was the time, moment in time, that we lost our language. And it's, it's, it breaks my heart. And so I'm striving, because that's our identity as Muskogee people, is the Muskogee language, and I believe in it. I met an anthropologist named Genevieve Bell who was doing her dissertation on the Carlisle Indian School and she was collecting all of the names of the students. She had gotten them from the National Archives records and at the same time I had started collecting the names from the Indian School newspapers that I was transcribing every week online to a group of descendants. So I had other names, not all of her names. And as I um, collected more and more names, we consolidated our names and we organized them into nations and we made lists of these names and put them online. Then more and more people started coming to the Cumberland County Historical Society where I work because they wanted to see the photographs and they wanted to see the actual newspapers that these names were appearing in. And I um, started to really develop a connection to these children because I knew their names. And that's why I'm emotional <laughs> about this, because they mean something to me. And also, I'm a mom, I'm a grandma, and my children never went to a school where there was a cemetery. so. It was really hard to just talk about the names without attaching all that loss and sadness to them. There are stories, many, many more stories that, that can come out of this particular um, slice of history. The stories belong with the families. They belong with the communities, academics and filmmakers and um, writers need to understand that Indian people don't owe them their stories. You know, so much has been taken and the stories can't be part of that. So, you know, I feel a, a commitment to talk about that in my community with non-Indian people. All right, what fantastic work those people are doing there, and uh, it was so neat to visit with them, see some of the old photos, and if you want to go on the database, you can do that. Uh, it's there on the story, so um, go check it out, uh, Carlisle Internet Database, you know, just a regular search will get you to that, and you can start researching and, and seeing some of the people that went to Carlisle and seeing if they're your ancestors. So it's a very neat deal, a very emotional day, uh, and very... Uh, nice to see them come through Muskogee Creek Nation uh, onto Eufaula after that as well. So they're really covering their ground. 
Well, our last story this week is from Mr. Kevin Barnett here at Muskogee Media. Kevin, you know, he's a, he's a new guy. We love the zeal he's got for doing some of the things he's doing for us and turning in some stories for Muskogee Vision here. And Kevin went out and uh, Kevin's a veteran. Uh, we really respect his service and everything like that. A veteran of the U.S. military. And uh, he latched on with the Honor Guard, wanted to do a story on that. So we let him go out and spend some time with them and really explore the Muskogee Nation Honor Guard. We uh, formed as the uh, just the jotted veterans, and it was just uh, veterans in Wetumpka that wanted to bring recognition to our veterans. And uh, uh, after a while, uh, we felt uh, like uh, we wanted to do more. What our main function is is to uh, honor the deceased veterans. You know, at funerals, we uh, hold the flag fire the rifle, fire, hold the flag, and present it, you know, to the near, next of kin. Well, Honor Guard was formed in 93, uh, primarily do uh, funerals and everything, but they do other events uh, such as uh, uh, bringing up colors for uh, requests that come in. I've seen them uh, doing a uh, parade, you know, stuff like that, and funerals and all, and so I found out about it when they were going to meet and all that, and I went and listened in and uh, found out it was something I wanted to do, so I've been in uh, probably maybe 10 years, I don't know, but uh, it's been a good run. I'm glad I did, and uh, I hope I contributed somehow. Sixties. We have some of the uh, couple probably in their fifties, but majority of them are in the sixties and we in the seventies. But uh, as, as, uh, I didn't join until I was in my fifties. But right now, uh, looking for uh, guys that uh, would like to join our group, but it's all voluntary. The uh, veterans that we have now, they're they're committed. Uh, they are committed to this, and hope that we can get you know young ones to come in and join because. You know, we're getting older, and uh, so we're uh, kind of limited now on our membership, but we have about 20 right now in our group. Oh, yeah, the young people, we can always use new people in. We're always uh, extending invitations to the veterans to come in and help us out and be part of it. All right. Thanks to Kevin Barnett. Great story there. And I want to thank those individuals uh, from Carlisle uh, and the, the Carlisle area, actually from Dickinson College and the Cumberland County Historical Society for that great story there. And also just the Morris Community, Morris Public Schools for having us in, you know, for the uh, school board meeting this week and uh, seeing, you know, really seeing and hearing uh, some of the emotion and some of the uh, the feeling that is behind what's going on in Oklahoma education and, and what it's bringing out of people and it's really something to see and we hope that you stay with us on MuskogeeMedia.com for further coverage. For Jared Moore, I'm Jason Salzman, all of us here at Muskogee Vision. You guys have a great week. We'll see you next time.